Hi everyone, we are going to continue our web series on non-parametric measurements. Uh, again, we're focusing here now on one-way ANOVAs, but instead we're going to look at what happens when we look at a re repeated measures ANOVA. So just to check back again, uh, as we've been doing, remember that non-parametrics are used when the normality of the dependent variable is not assumed, when we don't have large sample sizes, but most commonly you'll see it happen when we don't meet the basic level of measurement of the dependent variable, which is a minimum interval level of measurement. So just to review again, all ANOVAs are very basic on two aspects, the type, the number of independent variables and the type of independent variable. Obviously we're working in the non-parametric world, so the number of independent variables has to do with factorial. There is no factorial uh, non-parametric. We're only dealing with one ways. So we're only going to deal with something that has one independent variable. Then we have our two options for the type of independent variable, independent groups versus repeated measures. The lecture that we're going to focus on today is what happens when we look at a one-way repeated measures non-parametric. And that is going to be in this area of our possible combinations. Just to remind you, there is no non-parametric equivalent of factorial novus. So last lecture we looked at the independent groups equivalent of a one-way NOVA, which we called the, or was the kreskel wallace test. In this video we're going to look at the one-way repeated measures non-parametric design, which is the Friedman and NOVA by ranks. Now because you've been doing this kind of same setup in t-tests and ANOVAs now for four lectures, I'm not going to spend a ton of time, I'm basically just going to introduce you to a very basic example and show you the SPSS output. So the purpose here is the wish, researcher wishes to determine if satisfaction with a professor on a one to five scale changes over the course of the semester when measured at three different time periods, beginning midterms and end of the semester. So the statistical hypothesis, again, our, our jargon here is mean rank. So no significant mean rank difference is expected in satisfaction with the professor at the beginning or mid-semester and end of the semester. And remember, your substantive hypothesis would then show differences and make all three comparisons. So this is what the SPSS output looks like. Here, we'll start to walk through the first that we have our descriptives up top here, so mean standard deviations for the options on a 1 to 5 scale for all three. That we got the descriptives, now we also have the mean ranks. And remember the mean ranks aren't all that interpretable. Now they look like they're on a 1 to 5 scale, but they really aren't. So we have to go back. When we're reporting our data, we're going to use this means and standard deviations because that's what's actually reported in the unit of the variable. So after we identify the ranks, we, had, we look to see if it's statistically significant. So I look at my test statistic, which is a chi-square. It's reported on a chi-square distribution, and we have a p-value that's less than 0.05. If the p-value is less than 0.05, that means statistical significance exists, and we reject the null hypothesis. Now we have to figure out where those differences exist. So again, a pairwise comparison is conducted comparing each of the three time periods. So we compare pre to mid satisfaction, pre to post satisfaction, mid to post. Again, we don't look at the adjusted SIG here, We're gonna, or the regular SIG, we look at the adjusted SIG. And you see the adjusted SIG, we have from pre to mid a statistical difference, and we have from pre to post a statistical difference. Well, then we have to find out, that just tells us the dif difference exists. So if we go back to our steps, one, this tells us a statistical significant difference exists between the three groups. Two, well, wh where's the differences exist between those three groups? It's from pre to mid and from pre to post, not from mid to post. Three, what is the direction of those differences? Now we go back to the means. We see that post is significantly higher than pre, Post is significantly higher than mid, no significant, no significant mean difference exists between mid and post. And you would write up the statement of the findings and conclusion statement as such. So that ends the uh, ANOVA component of this lecture, of the web series. Uh, go on to Moodle and complete the self-quiz. Be prepared to answer questions on the exam and bring any questions you might have to class. Alright, thank you very much.